Hey guys, and T, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. If you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. This romantic number was a lot of fun to make. It features all the things that make feel real pretty like, with this sweetheart neckline, puffy balloon sleeves, and this cute stitch combination. It's perfect for most settings, but I especially like it for a date night. How would you wear it? Let me know in the comments below. I love hearing the fun you guys get into. Now it's time to get on with the show, so without further ado. For this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 400 grams of yarn, and that's 730 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5.5 and, and 7 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There's a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Watch the end of the video to learn how to enter this week's giveaway. We're using three stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. And half double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 5.5 millimeter hook and start by making a chain from our underarm down to the bottom of our top. Mine's going to be a chain of 60, and that's 14 inches or 37 centimeters. And also remember that because this is all slip stitches, it will shrink your work. So add a little bit of extra length to account for the shrinkage. And there isn't any real math to it, so I would suggest 2 inches or more. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain into a chain of 1. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So insert yarn over and pull through both loops on our hook. Insert your hook into that next chain, yarn over and pull through. Continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. In order to make this a little bit easier for you guys, when you guys are doing your slip stitches, make sure when you yarn over and pull through, you aren't pulling your working yarn tight after you pull through, you're leaving it as is. So, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through into that next stitch. And this keeps it from getting too tight for your next row. So keep doing this and I'll meet you back at the end of this row. Now that we're at the end of our slip stitch row, we do need to do an increase. So from here, we're going to chain one and chain two. The first chain that we did is going to count as a stitch and the second chain is going to count as our turning chain. So we're going to flip our work and into that second chain that we have from our hook, we're going to insert with a back loop slip stitch. So skip this first chain, insert your hook into that next back loop, which is that chain's loop that's furthest away from us. And just like before, yarn over, pull through everything. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything. Continue to do this, making your way all the way down, and I'll meet you back at the end of this row. We have made our way all the way down with our second row, which was a back loop slip stitch row. From here, we're going to chain one, flip your work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then when we reach the end of this row, we are going to increase again. So do your chain two, flip your work, slip stitch into that second chain from your hook, and then do back loop slip stitches all the way down. We're going to repeat these two rows until we reach the front of our body making sure that we're putting it up to ourselves and stretching it as if we were wearing it because we do want this to be fitted. I'll meet you guys back along the top. I'm back with my underarm portion and I have a total of 11 rows. And this what we have right here is an inch and a half or four centimeters and that's unstretched. Now we're going to work on the slight curve that goes downwards right before we go in with our sweetheart neckline. So from where we're at, I actually want this to be just a little bit higher up on my body so I'm going to do an extra chain of two. I'm going to chain one, chain two. That gives me an extra half an inch of height. I'm going to block off that last chain, do a chain of one, flip my work, and then into that second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a back loop slip stitch. 
and then another back loop slip stitch. And then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. When we reach the end of our row, we're going to do a chain of one, flip your work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two stitches so that we can decrease together. We've put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and we have left the last two stitches, so we're going to decrease together. Insert your hook into that second to last back loop, yarn over, pull through. Into that next back loop, yarn over, and automatically pull through all three of those loops. So pull through one, two, and three. That's how we do our decrease of two back loop slip stitches. From here, we're going to chain one. Flip your work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. When we reach the bottom, do a chain one, flip your work, and then decrease into the last two stitches the same way that we just did. And we're going to repeat these two rows where we do a decrease into every other row until this reaches about mid boot. And then I will meet you guys back along the bottom so that we can do a decrease into every row to get a nice curve for our sweetheart neckline. All right, so I now have a slight curve down to our sweetheart neckline, and I have a total of 22 rows, and this is 3 inches or 8 centimeters, and that is unstretched. From here, we're going to work on the curve that curves down to the middle of our chest. So, since we should have all ended on the bottom, we're going to chain one, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two because we're going to decrease together now into every row. So I'll meet you guys back along the top. I put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two, and now we're going to decrease into those two stitches. So into that second to last back loop, pull through, last back loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and since we need this to curve down a little bit quicker now, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and start with a decrease as well. So insert into that first back loop, pull through, into that next back loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. Put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We are going to maintain decreasing into every row now until this reaches the middle of our chest. And I will meet you back along the bottom of our work. All right, so we are back and we now have made our way over to the middle of our chest with our decrease rows. Now we're going to repeat everything that we did here, but with increases going the other direction. So we're going to start by doing an increase into every row for the same amount of rows that we have on this side. We should have all ended along the bottom, so I'm going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we have just one left, and I'll meet you guys back. We've put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and we have left that last stitch. Now, since we need to do an increase into every row for this portion, working our way up, we're going to have to put two back loop slip stitches into that same last stitch. Now this one may be a little tricky, so I'm going to walk you guys through that really slowly. Into that last back loop, we're going to insert with one back loop slip stitch, and then into that same stitch with our second back loop slip stitch. Sometimes if you're putting your second one into the same stitch, it could be a little hard to pull through, but it is possible, and that is our increase of two. From there, we're going to do the same increases that we did along this side to work our way up to the next row. So chain one and chain two. When I say that it may be tricky, our second slip stitch that we made into that same stitch may be hidden. So you just want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on it. And also to make sure that you're keeping track of the amount of stitches that you should have for each row, because it can very easily get lost in the socks. But what we're going to do from here is flip our work. You're going to skip the first chain nearest to our hook. Now this is a stitch that can easily be overlooked. So we're going to make sure to insert your hook into there yarn over, and pull through everything. And then from here on out, should be easy peasy. So put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then we're going to keep repeating these two rows for the same amount of rows that we have on this side, where we did a decrease into every row. And then I'll meet you guys back. I've just finished up going in with the rows where I did an increase into every row. And now we're going to increase into every other row for the same amount of rows that we have for our front panel. To finish off our sweetheart. We all should have ended along the bottom, so from here we're going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. 
and I'll beat you guys back at the end of this row so that we can increase into the next. We've just made our way up with putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now to increase, we're going to chain two, flip our work, and then just like the other side, we're going to skip the first stitch that's nearest to our hook, insert your hook into that next chain's back loop with a slip stitch. We are going to continue to increase into every other row for the same amount of rows that we have along the side, and then I'll meet you guys back so we can close off with our underarm together. I have just finished going in with the entirety of our sweetheart neckline. We should have all ended along the top. So from here, we're going to chain one and cut. And now we're going to do our underarm together. So since we did a chain of two on this side, we're going to insert our hook into the third stitch from the top on this side, working our way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So making sure that we're inserting our hook into that back loop, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. This also counts as our first slip stitch for this row. So make your way all the way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We reach the end, do a chain of one, flip your work, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and I'll meet you back when we have just two stitches left. We put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We left the last two stitches, with my last one being that chain one that we did when we started this off. So let's do our decrease. Insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through into that last back loop. We're going to yarn over and pull through everything. Chain one, flip your work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Continue to do a decrease into every other row until we have the same amount of underarm rows that we have over here. Then I'll meet you guys back. I've just finished up going in with my underarm rows. I did do a chain of a one and cut, and I am now all done with my front panel. Now to get started on our back panel, it's actually going to start off the same way that we did the front. So go ahead and make the same chain and same amount of rows with the same increases all the way up until we get to this point and then I'll meet you guys back to talk you guys how to go through the main portion of the back. I have the same underarm row as my front panel and from here we are at this point. So just like for our front panel, we're going to do a chain two, block off that last chain, do an extra chain of one, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. Continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then continue to do rows of back loop slip stitches with no increases and no decreases until we reach from this point all the way over until we reach this point. So I will meet you guys back when we're ready to do our underarm portion on the other side. I just made my way all the way across with my back panel with the same amount of rows that I have for the body portion of my front panel. I do have a chain of the one and cut. And from here, we're going to do the same underarm portion as our front panel. So we're gonna insert our stitch marker into the second stitch from the top. Insert your hook into that third stitch from the tops, back loop, and then repeat the same underarm portion for the same amount of rows. I will meet you guys back once we have all this done. We have just finished the entirety of our back panel. I did do a chain of a one and cut, and now we're going to seam our back and our front panel together. So all we're gonna do is sandwich them on top of each other and start by inserting your hook into the bottom corner stitch of the front and bottom corner stitch of the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through both stitches, do a chain of a one to secure, and now we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam. So into that first available stitch into the front panel, insert your hook only in through that front loop or the loop that's closest to you. And then into the back panel, insert your hook into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from you. From here, we should have three loops on our hook. So yarn over and pull through all three loops. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook in through that front loop. And then into the back panel, Insert your hook into that next stitches, back loop, yarn over, and pull through all three stitches. 
continue with our seam, making our way all the way up until we don't have any more stitches left, and then do the same thing on the other side. We have just finished seaming our side, and now we're going to get started on our sleeve. So the first thing we're going to do is insert our hook into the last stitch that we have into our side seam. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one. From here, we're going to work up our underarm portion that we have, plus the two stitches that we have that works up to our body, putting one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, and then one single crochet into each of these two stitches. So let's get this started. Let's find our first side slip stitch row. Mine is this raised one right here, so we're going to have to find that top loop. Insert your hook into there, and then single crochet. My next side slip stitch row is this divot right here, so I'm going to find this top loop. Insert my hook with one single crochet. Let's do one more set. My next side slip stitch is this raised row, so find that top loop. Single crochet. And then my next is this divot right underneath here. Insert. And then single crochet. Continue to put one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, into the two stitches that we have into the body, and then I'll meet you guys back. I've made my way all the way up with my single crochet. I'm now going to make an even number chain that reaches up and over my shoulder to this body corner right here. So I'm going to make a chain of 30, and that's 8.5 inches or 22 centimeters. And now that I have my chain, taking a look at this body corner that I have, I'm going to single crochet into that corner. And that counts as my first single crochet for this underarm portion right here. So just like on this side, put one single crochet into each of these two stitches that we have, and then one single crochet into each of these side slip stitch rows, and I'll meet you back. I've just single crocheted my way all the way down. We're now going to slip stitch into that chain one space. I'm going to chain one, and then put one single crochet into every stitch, and then into every chain, making my way up and over. Slip stitch into that chain one space, and then I'll meet you back so we can work on the length of our sleeve. So I've just single crocheted all the way around. I slip stitched into that chain one space. I've switched out to my seven millimeter hook. And before we get started on the length of our sleeve, we're going to need to insert our stitch markers into the two middle stitches that we have. If you guys have my numbers, mine are into the 28 and 29 stitches. And that's gonna be where we do the decrease going down the other side. So from here, with our seven millimeter hook, we're going to make an even number chain the length that we want our sleeve to be. So I want mine to be about 17 inches or 42 centimeters. So I'm gonna make a chain of 56. Now that we have our chain, we're going to get started on our moss stitch sequence. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain of two. Now into the fourth chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a single crochet. So we're going to count one, two, three, and then four. Into that fourth chain, Insert with a single crochet. And this is our first chain one space. From here, we're going to chain one, skip one chain, and then single crochet into the next. That is our second chain one space. Let's do this one more time. Chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next. We're going to keep doing this, making our way all the way down. Now that we've made our way all the way down with our first moss stitch, we're going to do one more moss stitch row. So when we're connecting it, we do need to make sure that our work is flipped right side out and that we are connecting it counterclockwise because we do have a ribbing that we want to see. So inserting into that next stitch, making sure we're going clockwise, we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch to close off this row number one. In order to start our row number two, we're going to slip stitch up one more stitch. We're going to chain one to get started on our moss stitch row. Flip, and then into that first chain one space that we have, we're going to insert with a single crochet. So insert and single crochet. Let's do one more. We're going to chain one, 
Our chain one counts as our single crochet stitch from our previous row. And we're going to single crochet into that next gap that we have, that next chain one space. Chain one into that next chain one space, single crochet. Make your way all the way down, putting one single crochet into each of these gaps. We just finished our row number two. Now for our sleeve, our row sequence is going to be two moss stitch rows and two back loop slip stitch rows. So getting started on my third row, we're going to do back loop slip stitches until we have one stitch left and then we're going to do an increase. So to get that started, we're going to chain one, flip our work. Into that first available stitches back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us, we're going to insert our hook into that back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. Into that next stitch, which is also that chain one space, so technically a chain, we're going to insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. Next back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. I'll meet you back when we have just one stitch left. We've made our way all the way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We have left our last one, so now we're going to do an increase into there together. So insert into that last back loop with one back loop slip stitch, and then with our second. The second one may be a little bit difficult to do, so keep a loose grip that'll help it from getting caught on that last stitch. So there's one, and there's two. From here, we're going to close this row off by slip stitching into that next stitch. And then, like I said, it's gonna be two slip stitch rows to get started on our next. We're going to slip stitch up just one stitch and flip our work. When it comes to the increases into our slip stitches, it may be a little tricky because the second one may be a little jumbled up like this. You just wanna make sure that you're not losing it. So I would suggest keeping track of your numbers for each row. But inserting your hook into that first stitch, there's our first slip stitch, and we're going to do an increase into here as well. So into that same first stitch, our second slip stitch. And then from here, make our way all the way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We've just finished our row number four, which was a back loop slip stitch row. Now we're going to go back to doing our two sets of moss stitch rows. So to get that started, we're going to chain two and flip our work. From here, we're going to skip one stitch and single crochet into the next. We're gonna chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next. Continue to do this, making our way all the way down. So I've made my way all the way down with my first moss stitch row for this next sequence or row number five. I did want to remind you that because of our increase, the last two stitches may look a little jumbled, but there are two stitches in there. So you wanna make sure that you're gonna have the correct amount of moss stitches. And we are still going to skip one, single crochet into that last. And now this moss stitch is finished. To close this off, slip stitch into that next stitch, slip stitch into the next stitch, chain one, Flip your work, and then just like our moss stitch row number two, we're gonna find that first chain one space and single crochet into there. And then from here, it's going to be a repeat of the four previous rows all the way up until we reach our stitch marker, and then I will meet you guys back. I have exactly one half of my sleeve all finished. I made my way all the way up to my stitch marker, and now we're going to do the same thing that we did here but instead of increasing into the slip stitch rows, we're gonna be decreasing. So we should have all ended along the end. We're going to continue with the two rows that we just did. If you guys just did moss stitch rows, do that for the same amount of rows because we're going to be marrying the same thing going down. But since my last two rows were back loop slip stitches, I'm going to make my way down, leaving the last two stitches so that we can decrease together. But go ahead and get your rows done until we're ready to decrease with our slip stitch rows. We've made our way all the way down and I'm ready to do my decrease from my first back loop slip stitch row. So I have left one, two stitches right before the base and now we're going to decrease. So insert your hook 
into that second to last back loop, pull through, also into that last back loop, and from here we're going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. And from here we're going to slip stitch into that next available stitch. So I'm going to take my stitch markers out because I don't need these anymore. And then into that next stitch, insert your hook to close off this decrease row. And just like on the other side, we're going to be doing two rows of back loop slip stitch rows and then two rows of moss stitch rows. So since I just did my first, let's get started on our second back loop slip stitch row together. That's going to start with a decrease as well. So to start it off, slip stitch into the next stitch into the base and flip your work. We're going to insert our hook into that first available stitches back loop, pull through, the next back loop, yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. When you reach the end, do a chain of two, Clip your work and then do the same moss stitch rows. So we aren't going to be doing any increases or decreases into those. And repeat these four rows until we make our way all the way down. And then I'll meet you back so that we can seam our sleeve together. We have just finished going in with all of our sleeve rows. Now we're ready to seam it. So the first thing we're going to have to do is slip our work inside out to make sure that all of our seams is going to be on the same side. Once when our work is slipped, we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of the front panel, which that's where the working yarn is. And then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of the back panel, yarn over, and pull through. And now we're going to do a single crochet seam. So into that first available stitch, which is this single crochet, insert your hook into the front panel. Then into the back panel, insert your hook into that first stitch, and single crochet. Let's do the next one. My next available stitch is this chain one space. So I'm going to insert my hook and then into my back panel, I should have that same available space into there and single crochet. We're going to keep single crocheting into both the front and the back panel, making our way all the way down. And when we don't have any more stitches left, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, we have just seamed our sleeve and we're now going to work on our cup. So I'm going to switch back out to my five and a half millimeter hook. And I'm going to start by single crocheting along the bottom of my sleeve. So I inserted my hook into any one of these bottom rows, insert it, pull through, chain up of one. And now we're going to put one single crochet into every side moss stitch row and then nothing into the side slip stitch row. So it's going to kind of cinch up for us a little bit. Let's get this started. The first row that I have is this side moss stitch row right here. So I'm going to insert into that side stitch and single crochet. My next stitch is this side moss stitch row. So find that loop and single crochet. I next have these two slip stitch rows. We're going to skip over both of those and then find our next moss stitch row, which is this one right here. Insert your hook, single, next side moss stitch, and single. Skip our slip stitches and repeat. I'll meet you guys back once we slip stitch into that chain one space. Now that we've single crocheted around the entirety of the bottom of our sleeve, we're now going to work on the cuff. So we're going to start by making a chain the length that we want our cuff to be. I want mine to be about 6 inches or 15 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 22. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain up of 2. This counts as our turning chain, and we're going to yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a half double crochet. So insert, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook, so yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do one more. So yarn over, into that next chain, pull through, pull through three. Put one half double crochet into every chain. So making sure that our work is flipped right side out and right side up, we're going to be working clockwise. So I'm going to flip my work. And from here, I'm going to count one, two stitches, slip stitch into there. And from here, we're going to do a back loop slip stitch row. So slip stitch just once into that next stitch, flip my work, 
and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. When we reach the end, do a chain of two, flip your work, and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. When we make our way to the base, connect it into the base the same way that we just did, and alternate between a back loop half double and back loop slip stitch row until we don't have any more stitches left. And I'll meet you back to seam it together. So we've made our way all the way around with our back loop half double and back loop slip stitch rows, and now we're going to seam our cuff. We're going to want to make sure that our work is flipped right side out because we're going to be doing outside loop slip stitch seam, just like how we did for the sides. So let's just do the first one together. Into the first available stitch that we have into the front panel, insert your hook in through that front loop or the loop that's closest to us. And then into that first stitch into the back panel. Insert your hook into that back loop. Should have three loops on our hook, so yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. Go ahead and keep doing this, making your way all the way down, and then do a chain up of one and cut when we don't have any more stitches left. Do the same thing that we did here on this side, on the other side, and I'll meet you guys back. All right, now that we have finished our cuffs, we're now going to get started on the top order. So we're first going to start with a single crochet row. Along the back, I'm going to insert my hook into the third stitch into the shoulder, working towards the back. And we're doing that so that we can have a decrease from our chain to our body portion. I'm going to pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. I have one stitch right before my last stitch into my sleeve. So I'm going to single crochet into that stitch. And then from that last stitch into the first side row that I have into my back, I'm going to do a decrease. So into that next stitch, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull through. Into my first side row for my back panel, which is this raised one right here, I'm going to insert my hook into there as well. Yarn over, pull through, should have three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And then from here, we're going to put one single crochet into every other side row, making our way all the way across. So since I inserted my hook into this raised side slip stitch row, I'm going to skip this indented one and then single crochet into the next. So insert with one. Skip this next one, single crochet into the next. We're going to keep doing this, working our way until we are at our last side row right here. Now I've single crocheted my way all the way across. I'm now at my last side row right here. So I'm going to do a decrease into this last side row and my first stitch into the sleeve. So inserting my hook into that stitch, I'm going to pull through. I'm now going to find the first stitch from our sleeve, insert with a decrease. And then from here, we're going to put one single crochet into every stitch, making our way up and over our sleeve. And then I'll meet you back at this last stitch in the front. We've made our way all the way down until we have just one stitch left into the front of our sleeve. I'm going to insert my hook into there, pull through, and then also into that first row that we have into the front panel. I'm going to insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Now working into the front panel, we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side row making our way all the way down. So let's get this started. I just inserted my hook into this raised row right here. So my next row is this divot. I'm going to insert with one single crochet. My next side row is this raised one. So I'm going to insert with one single crochet. And then my next is this divot. Find that top stitch and single crochet. We're going to continue to do this all the way down until we reach our last side row so that we can do another decrease over here. Now at our last side slip stitch row, we're going to insert our hook into there, pull through, and then into the first stitch, into the sleeve, go in with our decrease. Put one single crochet into every stitch, slip stitch into that chain one space. I've just finished the single crochet across the back. I did do a chain up of one and cut, and now we're just going to go in with the border portion of the top. So taking a look at our work, making sure that it's flipped right side out and right side up, we're going to find the stitch 
to the left of the sweetheart. We should have an even amount of stitches on both sides. So I'm going to insert my hook into that left stitch right next to the middle. Insert my yarn onto my hook and pull through. We're going to start by making a chain the length that we want this border to be. I want mine to be about an inch or three centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of three. Here's one, two, three. I'm going to block off that last chain and do a chain up of two. This is our turning chain, and now we're going to yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet. We're going to insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook. So insert your hook into that third chain, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook, so yarn over and pull through all three. We're going to put one half double crochet into every chain, so since I only have two more, let's do that together. We're going to yarn over, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. And then one more, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. Now we need to connect it into the base. So we're going to count one, two stitches. We're going to slip stitch into that second stitch into the base to close our half double crochet row. And now that we have our half double crochet row attached, we're now going to do a back loop slip stitch row. So how we're going to do that is start this off by slip stitching into the next stitch, into the base, and flip our work. Now we did a total of three half double crochets when we started this off, but we should have an extra stitch at the very end for the chain two. So we're going to be doing a total of four back loop slip stitches. So into that first back loop, there's one, there's two, there's three, and then into that last chain that we have, there is four. Now to make sure that we don't accidentally decrease, we're going to do a chain two and flip our work. From here, we're going to skip this first stitch. So we're going to end up having a total of one, two, three, back loop half double crochets. So let's get that started. Yarn over, skip this first back loop, and then insert your hook into the second with a back loop half double crochet. So here's my first half double crochet. My second back loop half double crochet, and one more. So just like my first row, I should have a total of one, two, three half double crochets and a chain two. Slip stitch into that second stitch into the base to close off this row. And let's just get this started off one more time. Slip stitch into that next stitch into the base and flip your work. Should have one, two, three, and then four back loop slip stitches. And we're doing it this way so that our edges can be nice and clean. So let's get this started. Here's my one, two, three, and then into that last space that we have into the chain two when we started our previous row, four back loop slip stitches. Chain two, flip your work, and we're going to repeat all the way until we reach this corner. And now that we reached our corner and we finished on a back loop slip stitch row, I'm going to show you guys how to do our corner so that it doesn't buckle when we're wearing it. So getting started on our half double crochet row, we should all be along the outside. What we're going to do is start with smaller stitches, so single crochets, and then work our way up to a half double crochet the closer that we get to the base. Since I have a total of three stitches, I'm going to do two singles and one half double crochet. And same rule applies as the last half double crochet rows. Now I'm going to chain one since I'm starting with a single crochet row. We're going to skip that first back loop into that second. I'm going to insert my hook into that back loop with a single crochet into that next back loop with another single crochet and then into my last stitch. I'm going to insert with a back loop half double crochet. From here, we're going to count up one, two stitches, and slip stitch into there because we need our base to be just as wide as our other back loop half double crochet rows. And from here, we're going to crochet per usual. 
So slip stitch into that next stitch, flip your work, and do a row of back loop slip stitches. And then we're going to repeat these rows with this same type of row when we get to each of our corners. And then I'll meet you guys back when you reach this last stitch right here in the middle. We've made our way all the way around with our top band, and now we're going to seam it with an outside loop slip stitch seam. So the same way that we have done our sides. So we're going to start by making sure that our work is flipped right side out. We're going to insert our hook into that first stitch from the other side where we started us off. We're going to yarn over, pull through everything. And then from here, we're going to insert our hook into that first available stitches front loop, and then into that first available stitches back loop into the back panel. Should have three loops on our hook, so we're going to yarn over and pull through everything. We're going to keep doing this, making our way all the way up when we don't have any more stitches left, do a chain up of one and cut. And this is our piece all finished. The last thing we're going to have to do is weave in all of our ends. Our ends are woven in and our balloon sleeve top is all done. I'm sure you guys have noticed, but I've been loving balloon sleeves, so I'm really excited to share this with you. The airy balloon sleeves, neckline, and color are perfect for spring, and I know you guys are going to style yours up real cute, so don't forget to tag us on Instagram so we can show you to our highlights. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your favorite part of crochet. Good luck to everyone who enters. Also, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, because believe it or not, it actually helps. And be sure to share us on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook. Those links are down below. Links to our Etsy page is down there too if you want to buy this piece or any other piece on the channel. And be sure to favorite the shop so you don't miss out on new patterns and exclusive deals. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.